Okay, so in this video we're going to look at loading sounds and programming or drawing and recording some MIDI um, to make some drum beats. And we'll also have a sort of very basic look at counting, counting time for drums. So before we make any um, sounds or um, start recording anything, let's just have a look at the um, metronome and tempo settings uh, and we'll have a look at the grid as well as we go. So let's um, start off by turning the metronome on, which is up here. And this will give us an idea or the feel for the tempo of the um, track. And also just be aware this is your tempo volume. It's the preview volume and the tempo volume. So we'll turn that down a bit. And we're at 120 beats per minute at the moment. So let's listen to that. Okay, so you get the feel and we can just drag up and down or type into this to change the tempo. So slower, faster, and I could just type in 120. I can also tap the tempo as well. So if you've got um, sort of an idea in your head or something you're trying to play along to, um, you can tap in the tempo here. So, and I'll I do it faster, okay, and the longer that you do it for the more of an average it's going to give you, so you want to tap out um, a couple of bars. So let's um, go back to 120, which is going to suit uh, what we're trying to do here today, or what I'm trying to do, um, and let's have a really, really basic look at the grid um, within clips and how the metronome in the grid can help you sort of count time and decide where to put your your drum hits. So grab yourself a sound. You know how to browse um, and load sounds now. So I'm just going to get something um, that I made from some field recordings um, that, that I did with my last trimester studio unit guys. So these are all things that we recorded. Um, out in the bush and I'll just quickly tweak this one just a little bit just want to shorten that I'll show you how to do this later on there we go um, okay so let's create a clip by double clicking and this clips gonna be a uh, one bar length so it's just gonna loop the one bar length continuously until I stop it. So if we hit play on the clip, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. So these are, this is one bar with four beats inside it, and um, we'll stick to four, four timing. You can change that up here, but um, we'll stick to four, four to keep it simple. So let's have a listen to um, a very simple four to the floor beat and just count along with that. So I'm going to put one beat on each of these uh, quarter notes and I'll just show you how the grid can sort of help you work that out if you want to use it that way. So um, by right clicking or um, control click you can choose the note division. So I'm going to just put it to quarter notes and you can see here that there's one kick drum every quarter note for one bar so let's hit play and see how that sounds okay it's pretty boring straightforward one one kick drum on every beat um, so we could try putting the second and the fourth MIDI note on this sort of wood block or side stick kind of sound. It could be a snare drum. Um, I just prefer using different sounds to keep me interested sometimes. So let's have a listen to how that sounds. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we could perhaps put um, kind of shaker sound on eighth notes, let's have a listen to how that would sound, and then maybe we'll do we'll change it to sixteenth notes. 
So I'm going to change my grid to eighth notes, which is going to allow me to put um, something on each of those divisions more easily. I uh, might choose, let's put these. So at the moment, to create notes, I'm just double clicking on each space that I want to put one in. Another way to do that is once you've got a few, um, you can select the first one and shift click the last one. And you'll notice up the top here, there's this blue selection. If I go Command D, which is duplicate, it's going to duplicate those notes with that length, but it's going to leave these behind. The other way to do it is just to select one and duplicate a few different times. So there's a, there's a couple of ways to do that, but we'll stick to that for now. So. Okay, and let's put a 16th note at the end here. So we've got this little kind of ending of our one bar loop happening. Um, and to do that easily, I'm going to go ahead and change the grid to 16th notes bring this in and double click here. So let's have a listen to that. One, two, three, four. I'm going to change the length of my uh, loop to two bars. Okay, so I just changed that down here. I've got my loop and the start position is at one and the length is at, is two so it's two whole bars long and if we let's kind of just count along with that now so we've got one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four so it's twice as long as it was before and i could make that any length of one if i make it four then we've got one two three four one two three four and so on you can see what's happening there Okay, so let's set this to two bars length for now. And I'll zoom in on just that section. There we go. Um, let's have a look at putting some notes. Now, to get um, a bit more of an interesting flow um, when you're using MIDI, I like to use um, some found sounds. So I've got this here. Um, let's have a look where that is. If I click that, you'll notice it plays for quite long and it's almost got its own kind of rhythm. Oops, I pressed two things there. I just meant to press this. And if I play that along with the metronome, you'll see how it's got its own kind of rhythm. I went a little bit off there because I'm just clicking with the mouse. So what I want to try and do is draw these in and I'm just going to use duplicate to put them on um, every beat and let's see how that sounds. Now that's actually, that's not what I want because I want it to um, play out for a bit longer so I'm going to put one on every second beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now if I turn off the metronome, you'll notice that that's given it a bit of a groove. So I'm going to hit play. And this time I'm using my MIDI keyboard to trigger this. And I'm just going to kind of play along for a moment until I think I've got something that I want to put in. Okay, so I'm going to put some notes there, um, and instead of drawing them in this time, I'm going to play them in. And what I want to do is use this um, MIDI overdub button. So this is going to allow me to record MIDI over what I've already done and not rewrite it. And this is the overdub record button. So I'm not going to use this one, and I'll explain these later. What I'm looking for is this MIDI overdub button here. So I'm going to hit that and it's going to start playing and recording and then I'll play it in. One, two, three, four. Okay, and I just press stop and I'm not recording anymore and you can see the notes that I've put in. You'll notice that they're off the grid. Um, now this can be 
a good and a bad thing. Okay, so it can be bad if it sounds out of time, and it can be good because um, it's going to create a bit of interest uh, or a bit of groove into the um, the MIDI pattern that's going on. So if if everything's on the grid, it can sound very robotic um, and very MIDI-ish and not natural. Um, but sometimes if you're too far off the grid, it's not going to sound great. So I'm just going to manually move um, a couple of these. I'm not going to put them all, but I'm going to put the first one right on that downbeat. And I'll leave this one off. And I might put this second one a bit closer, but leave it just a tiny bit off. So let's have a listen to that. Okay, so I'm going to put my um, rim shot, a kind of snare hit. Um, one, two, three, four, two, three, four. On the four of each of each bar. And I'm going to put a couple of these click sounds. Put a couple of these on the um, upbeats here. And I'm going to select this, these notes and this selection and duplicate that across. And what I might do is option click to duplicate these and put them on this shaker sound as well. So now I've got this. Okay, let's have a quick look at velocity. So I want to make these all a little bit quieter. So with them selected, if I hold command, you'll notice my um, cursor changes to this icon. And the little um, st um, sticks down the bottom here change um, as I pull this down. So these are getting quieter now. And I can do that to individual notes. So I want every second one of these to be a little bit quieter. So I'm just going through holding command and dragging these down a bit. Okay, so I'm going to put in some little 16th note, 16th notes near these um, wood block or snare kind of hits. And what I want is a short sound just to create a bit more of a groove. So let's have a listen to that. And I'm going to put a second wood block here, but turn it down quite a bit. Let's do one last thing. What I'm going to do is duplicate the loop. Just going to make it twice as long. And I'm going to put one of these rattles just in the beginning. Um, it doesn't need to be extended out because of the way my sample is working. So that's just going to happen once every four bars now. So one bar, two bars, three bars, four bars, and back to the beginning. Let's have a listen. And up the end here, I actually don't want either of these. And I might put one something else in there. I'll chuck one of these in, just in line with the stick, uh, the stick hit there, or side stick kind of sound. And I'll just make it a bit louder. Let's have a listen to that.
Okay, let's finish up there for this one. So your exercise there is to count time and um, start to create beats that you're going to use for the beginning of your project.